If you're using an Android device, then you could be using Google Calendar. If you want to use that calendar on your iPad, then you do need to set that up. This video will show you how you can sync your Google Calendar to your iPad, including sharing multiple calendars. The first thing you need to do is to add your Google account to your iPad. So I'm going to Settings, Mail Contacts Calendar, and then Add Account. So in the Accounts at the top here, Add Account, and I'm going to add my Gmail account. And that has my contacts and my calendar, notes. So tap Google and then enter in your details for your Gmail account. So the name of the account. Your Gmail address. The description, so I don't want it to be known as Linda Barron 1956 in my list of contacts. So I'm going to rename this one, the description. And then the password. Normally you'll just enter the password for your Gmail account. However, if you've set up two-step verification, then you're going to need to also set up an application-specific password. Uh, two-step verification will not work on uh, standalone devices, so you have to actually create a new password. So if I put my normal password in for my email and then do next, it's going to attempt to verify my Gmail account. And it will give me an error because I've set up this two-step verification. I need to set a app-specific password. So if I go to the computer and into my Gmail account and into contacts, and so this is the, uh, the switch between the two. So this will get me to, to the Gmail and to the contacts. And what I need to do is go into the account settings and set up an application specific password. So go into your account, so it's up in the, the top right, and select account. And this is where you can change some of your security settings, your, your Google Plus settings. In this case, we want to change security. So two-step verification is a really good idea to have enabled on any Google accounts because it will prevent somebody from accessing your account, setting up a new password, or having your, your current password changed by somebody you don't know. So you can see here where the security is, that two-step verification is enabled, and now I want to change an app password. So to sign into my account, and then I'm going to select an app. So I want to use Mail on my iPad, so I need to generate a password. And this is the password that I have to use when I'm setting up my Gmail account on my iPad or a phone or a laptop, uh, anything that's different to your normal computer. And so there's the, the, uh, the application, and you can revoke that at any time, uh, then done. So now if we go back to the iPad, and this time put in that application specific password so this is the new password that I've entered now I can tap next and it will verify that account and add it now you've got to decide with that Gmail account do you want to turn on Google contacts Google calendar Google mail Google notes I want to turn them all on because I'm actually going to sync my Google calendar uh, to the iPad, the contacts, and any notes. So tap save. Uh, one last setting that you need to change is default setting of the calendar. So back into settings, mail contacts, calendars. And if you go towards the bottom there, there is a calendar section where you can set some of the calendar settings, amongst them being the default calendar. So if I tap that, I need to indicate out of all the accounts that I have on that iPad, which one of those accounts is going to be the account that syncs to the calendar. Uh, I can use one calendar to sync. 
there are other users on this iPad and I can use their calendars within the calendar app. In the settings, just indicate what is your default account. And then open the calendar app. And what's there is dependent on what you have set in this calendars button. So this is where you can indicate what calendars are going to be shown. Now if I do show all calendars, then every account on here has now got a tick on it. So all of the calendars will be shown, which becomes what quite difficult to interpret because there's no color difference within the iPad app. You can't change any color, colors to indicate this is somebody's calendar, this is someone else's calendar. It's not that useful as, a, as an application. If I don't want to show all the calendars, so I'm going to hide them. If I hide them, there's nothing there. The only calendar I want to show is my Linda's one. And I also want to sh show my Harry's calendar. And Harry is the dog. And he has his own little uh, activities and events that we have to plan for. So I only want to show those. And then done. And these are the entries already in there. So, so these are... Mine, the shopping, the lunch, and the haircut, and this is Harry's, the groomer, and the groomer. And again, there's no color coding to indicate that's a different one. So you would see that on the Google Calendar, but not in the iPad. Let's look at how it works and how it syncs and how you add and, and edit events. So I've got both calendars up on the screen. The one on the left is the iPad Calendar app, and the one on the right is the Google Calendar. And to use the Google Calendar, I've signed into my Google account and into the Calendar app. So these are all the, the events, and you can see that they match on the iPad one. If I was going to add a new event on my iPad, because realistically I spend more time on the iPad than the computer, so I'm more likely to add and amend and delete events on my iPad than go into the computer and open up Google. So let's add a new event to the iPad calendar. Tap the plus, and I'm going to add a doctor's appointment. And just go through all of the different settings there. It's not all day. I'll turn that one off. And it's on the 23rd of June at 11 a.m. And ends 12 p.m. So I'm going to repeat that every week. And I want an alert the day before. You can change that to all these different times. And then I want a second alert one hour before. And I'm going to put that into the Linda Barron calendar, not Harry's calendar. So adding that event and done. And then on the iPad, it adds, adds it in at the every week indefinitely because I didn't put an end date starting on June the 23rd. Um, so it's, I've added that to the iPad. It has to be refreshed on the, the computer so you can actually see it change because at the moment there's no change here. There's nothing on the 23rd or every week. So you can go into more and refresh and then all those come in. So there's all the different doctor's appointments. And if I amend that on here, so uh, perhaps the so go into that and edit it, and it's repeating weekly, and maybe it's not going to be repeating. It's going to be, well, it's going to be repeating, repeating on every four weeks on a Monday, and done, and save, and then all events because it's. Uh, I don't want to change just that one. I want to change them all. And now you can see that's changed. It starts on the 21st of June, or 23rd of June. And if we go into July, on the 21st of July, it should be once a month, August. So it's changed on, on uh, the computer. Let's put another example in. If I add a new event on the computer, so add dinner. And put it into the Linda Barron calendar, edit events, and it's not all day, so it's at uh, 
6 o'clock to 9 o'clock. Location. The Sicilian Orange Restaurant. And save. Now how do we get this event and the doctor's appointments to refresh on the iPad? Because there's no button in, in, you know, that you can see that refreshes it. You could hit the home button, go out of the app, and go back into the app, and that would force it to refresh. But there is a, another way. So if you tap the calendar button, and then you pull down with your finger, you can see it start to sync here and up here. And once it starts to sync there, you can then do done. It's still syncing. And that should update your information from the current Google appointments to your iPad. Now remember, the iPad is fetching information from Google. So if we now look at the, the calendar, there's that dinner appointment. And all of the doctor's appointments have gone to once a month. Now if I wanted to add a, another appointment for the dog, He's going into daycare. I just select it here. It's going into Harry's calendar. And edit just to see what the event is. It's going to be all day on the 26th and save. And his goes on to, his has a different color on the Google one. And that's for Harry. So as you can see, Harry's calendar is, is pink. Anything that's all day. Um, to get that to Refresh on the iPad, go back to June, hold the calendar button, pull it down to sync it, wait till it starts syncing up here, then you can go done, and there it comes in. So you can use the multiple calendars on the iPad from your Google calendars. In order to select what calendars you use, there's one sort of final step you have to do on the computer and let's go to google.com forward slash calendar forward slash iPhone select and then you select which calendars out of all the calendars that you have because there may be more than one you want to sync to your iPhone or your iPad or iCal so you do need to do that step as well. well once that's done you can now enter and edit and delete information on both sides from the iPad to the Google Calendar from the calendar Google Calendar back to the iPad. So I hope that's helped. That's all for this video.